What's up, guys? Brandon and Jeremy here from Friend of RC, giving you our review of the HPI Savage Flux XS, my all-time favorite RC truck. Here it is. Give it up. Yeah, you asked for it. <laughs> we bought it. So, do I was pressured by all of you to buy this because I have a very strict policy against HPI in general. Most people might call me a hater, but I've owned them. So you're not a hater if you own it, right? Yeah, if, and if you've tried it, you're entitled to your opinion. This is not my first HPI RC, and I didn't like the other ones. So anyway, let's get on to the technical. We'll cover all the, uh, the key points. So this is sold brushless, Ugh. of course. It's a castle-powered system, all waterproof. Um, it's 4,000 kV motor, two or three cell LiPo. Uh, it comes with 2.4 gigahertz radio as well, an HPI radio. I like that it comes with Deans on it. That's a nice feature to see. Um, it's, like I said, waterproof. We got all steel axles, which is a nice upgrade on a monster truck. You don't want to see plastic. Uh, what also else? bulletproof drivetrain. Yeah, bulletproof all-metal drivetrain. Very That's important right. to point on. It did not fail through the, the whole yeah. time we were testing it. In fact, we didn't. I don't think we technically broke any of the mechanical parts the whole uh, time. No, we I still say the diff is off. I yeah, think the diff is off. This is true, and we'll speak on that a little um, bit. But you know, some of the other features as you can you might have already noticed, there's two ESCs in here. Let me tell you why. <laughs> so we took it out. First day, sunny day, beautiful. The birds were chirping. Um, I actually had a six pack of Miller High Life. I was driving it, enjoyed a Max Amp 6500C battery through it, and then I went home. Came over to Brandon's house this morning to complete the filming of our running video. Turned it on. Dead. ESC toast. One use. Not even one battery. Didn't get it wet. Drove on completely dry gravel on a completely dry day. Mm -hmm. Dead. So that's got to go back. So right out of the box, dead ESC. And not fried. Just no. doesn't turn on. It's, yeah. You it know, it's not like it power. smells or anything. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't break up, uh, burst into flames or anything, but... Uh, the other thing is, uh, I guess you call this technical, is uh, I'm going to try to show you. They do have what I think is a really cool battery tray and also a really crappy battery tray at the same time. Like, they've got these little, um, there's little tabs that you pull back and you can flip uh, a little, I don't know, toggle over. There's two of them. Well, in my opinion, the tabs that you have to pull back, those have got to break sometime. I, in fact, I think it comes with some extra ones. I don't know. I'm pretty sure. Um, I, I don't like that. And I also don't like that when you open it up, ugh, like it rubs against the tires to like get it all the way open and uh, to expose our, you see how it like just rubbed against the tires? We can't get our max amps out here, which by the way had a 50% failure weight rate on the two, two S that we ordered. Not good max amps. <laughs> but uh, you know, I do like the battery tray. Um, other technical stuff, I mean, really, as you can see, we gave it a run. We took it out in the mud and dirt and stones. And uh, one thing about this layout, I do like how compact it is. If I never had to work on it, I think it's great. What I don't like is when you go through loose gravel, there's all these nooks and crannies for like little pebbles and things to get in there. And that's exactly what they do. And you find yourself like sh shaking it out, trying to get the stupid rocks out of there. Um, and there's, I'll just point out, there's no way, if you don't get them out to get to them, unless you completely disassemble it. Yeah, you're not getting at it. We, we thought about it multiple times in the field because that diff just, that diff does not sound right. And it was just like, we didn't have time. We didn't have an hour to tear the thing down and, and, and look at it. So we just dealt with it. O and it only an okay. hour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> An hour in uh, my time, which is more like 90 minutes, real time. Um, it did seem to be hold up as waterproof. I would say we, I took more than a risk, uh, as we always do in our running videos. Uh, we don't screw around. Like If we get a good running video and the truck blows up at the end, we're fine with it. In fact, as long as it got on camera, we're extremely yeah, happy it's it happened. even better, yeah. Um, but very durable, I'll say. Uh, let's go into cost of operation durability. The price, the price of uh, price point, right around three hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. It's fast as hell. I mean, we ran on it. I ran on two S max amps. I couldn't even imagine controlling this thing. 
at 3S. It was very, very fast. On the other hand, the steering serv servo was horrible, uh, but Terrible. I'll give it a pass because you know what? Most RTRs, even even my even the uh, Stampede 4x4 that we love so much, you know, the steering servo is always underpowered. Just but this thing was exceedingly underpowered, and, and I will tell you, out of the box, uh, when you turn the front tires, it was getting hung up. I had to really break it in for about 10, 15 minutes before we could actually like turn consistently. Yeah. So that could be part of it too. Like uh, when you're driving it, uh, I'll, let, I'll let you talk. I've been talking too long, but I was going to touch on the point that we were talking about how the steering servo, like at speed, uh, it just it fails. doesn't doesn't yeah. keep up. Yeah, I I guess it for me it's. Um, it was even a bigger problem. I, I look at it as a bigger negative than I guess how the weight you gave it. Um, compared to the Stampede steering servo, which yeah, is a little underpowered for a monster truck, I could still control it under power. This thing, it's it's fair to say you don't have control under power. When we're driving around an off-road terrain, the steering servo just gives up as soon as you hit the gas, and that's the literally the power of the motor spinning the wheels over overcoming the torque of the servo. And for me, that that's a deal breaker. Yeah. I mean, we were having such a tough time even mild off-road train, you know, you're just talking like bumpy dirt. It would just go wherever it wanted. I had no control over it. So for me, deal breaker. You'd have to upgrade the servo, and I think the HPI should really consider doing that. Mm. I don't even know what the torque rating is in there. I I think between 40 and 80, it's very low. Very yeah. disappointing. It it uh, Yeah, if you hit anything at all whatsoever, it was going in that, whatever the angle that you hit it, that's what, where it was going. It was uh, very difficult to film, too. Like Now, this is... Uh, as a disclaimer, people said this was a basher, so that's what we did. You look at this thing, we bashed it. I didn't. We didn't take it to a groom track in like a hyperbaric chamber. Yeah. No, we took it out to like construction site. We took it out to uh, mud field. We took it out on gravel. We took it out. I mean, closed roads. We did everything with this thing, like we would with, let's say, the Stampede four x four, and uh, you know. I don't want to go on a hating rant. I will say, I want to give you some positives. It was when we got it on a surface that was relatively smooth, like the baseball diamond, as you guys will see in the running video, this thing was fun. I mean, we had, I think after a long day of tweaking it and frustration, I think we kind of looked at each other and were like, man, this thing is kind of fun. Like on the, on the um, baseball diamond, it was kind of muddy and we just had it pinned and it was a lot of fun. Um, but it's a castle brushless system. I mean, that's... Yeah, and it's 4,000 kV. You compare yeah. that to 3,500 kV on the tracks and stuff. So a two-cell gets you a lot more punch. At the, at the sacrifice, a little more heat. We did have to stop every once in a while. It was overheating on us. Mm -hmm. And this was just very mild off-road running. We're not talking like going through deep mud and, you know, turning tires. Mm -hmm. We're just talking just running around on dirt, and we still had thermal issues. So Yeah, and we didn't... Uh, and also, one of the other negatives I thought was... Uh, we and we were talking about um, heating up, and then what were we were talking about before that. I'm trying to. The think. diff was another one. The, yeah, um, the diff sucked. The, like there's clicking. no resistance to like. They must um, be just grease filled. I think is what yeah. we were deciding. There, it's and that's a that's a huge loss on a monster truck having grease filled diffs. The moment you lose traction on one tire, you're just spinning two wheels. The diffs unload, and it was it was almost useless. So we. We got very frustrated running it on off-road piles of dirt because it gets stuck every other time we tried something. Yeah, where we ran this, honestly, like if you watch the running video, we ran it in the same general area that we ran the low C short course truck yeah. and the Stampede 4x4, and mm -hmm. both of them completely dominated that course. So yeah. we went out there thinking today we were going to get some great footage. It's like this kind of dumping ground for a construction company, and uh, there's always like piles of dirt, puddles of water, and this... I mean, it would roll over a, a, a rock and just get stuck. I mean, yeah. it was bad. Yeah. I mean, he would, I'd be like, you know, I'd be with the camera and say, all right, dude, jump that pile. And like anything else, like with the short course trucks or the stampede, they would just dominate it. And I was all ready. And it would just go. Brick wall. <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't. There's no. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I guess like it was ignorant of me to expect uh, it to be like a stampede. Mm -hmm. But that's the only thing I have to compare it. It's smaller. It's yeah. I think it's a better comparison. Yeah, it's a smaller scale technically, but you're running ten scale equipment. You're running ten scale tires. You're running on a platform that's only slightly smaller than some ten scale um, uh, stadium trucks. Yeah. Ground clearance of a uh, ten scale. I mean, 
honestly, it should perform like a 10 scale. It's all the suspension components are 10 scale. The drive line's 10 scale. It should be able to handle that, and it, and it really didn't. Yeah, the, uh, the other big letdown was, I, I mean, I know it has a low ground clearance, but it was really bad. I mean, like, getting bogged down in, like, reasonably long grass, that happens on, that barely happens, first of all, on a, like, put it this way. In, in a grass, the length, so you guys out there know, like, if you look at the grass and you're like, that's a little too long for my two-wheel drive short course truck, but my four-wheel drive is going to handle it, mm -hmm. that's the kind of grass this is going through. This is a four-wheel drive. This is a monster mini truck, whatever you want to call it. Couldn't handle it. It was getting no. bogged down. Um, the other thing, I don't know, maybe this is going to, this is just an observation. You might correct me if I say something stupid, but going through higher stuff, I have never seen four tires pick up like weeds and bind up inside the hubs yeah. like this thing. I don't know. I mean, it's clearly there's probably not design flaw or anything like that. It's just interesting to me how many times I had to take the wheels off and like unwind all this like, uh, I don't know, vegetable, yeah. <laughs> whatever that was Vegetation. in there. Vegetation, yeah. Vegetation, yeah. It, yeah, I see what you mean. It seems to just kind of attract it, just the design. Yeah. It, and that, I mean, that might be a small thing and unintentional by HPI, but if you're someone out there bashing, the last thing you want to do is, you know, have to keep emptying your truck of vegetation and rocks and dirt that get shoved in every nook and cranny you can't even see. Well, so, as we said, like, we define bashing as take it out of the box, charge a lipo, slam it in, and go. This thing fails. If you define bashing as something else, then that's okay. Like, that's... Let us know. We'll, we'll talk yeah. about it. <laughs> um, and... I know for a moment, as if I can like soapbox a little bit, I know people are going to bitch at us because we're talking. Here's the thing. We own it. We dro drove it. We spent our money on it. We didn't get it for free. Our time. Our time. All day today. We were in the field for almost 10 hours, and we still don't like it. <laughs> so it's not that we're HPI haters. There's a reason we don't have a ton of HPIs, and this is why. It's maybe they're, they're in a Savage Nitro, probably. Like we were talking about on the way home, it was like mm -hmm. 6 o'clock. We'd been out since like, I think we were up at like 7 or 8 this morning getting prepared. And, uh, you know, we talked about the Savage Flux or the Savage uh, XS. No. The Nitro? The Nitro, yeah. Right. And we may still try, I still may try that out, honestly. Um, because I'm not, I don't hate a brand. I just, this is the, this is what you get. I mean, it's uh, castle powered. It's great. Seemed what to hold up as waterproof. Mm -hmm. As Doing fast well as so hell. Far. Yeah. If you're gonna race on like a groomed surface, um, you know, stay off the gravel unless you want to shake it out every thirty seconds. It's counter. It, it's just counterproductive. Why would you buy a, a bashing monster truck if you have to stay on a groomed track the whole time? I guess that's what we're we're kind of yeah. subtly hinting at. What, uh, to its credit, it's still here in one piece, and it still works after a whole day of bashing. Yeah. So, hey, you, HPI, good job on the drive line, good job on just making it durable. But everything else that goes into basher, you know, I guess we sent the benchmark at, and I hate to name drop, the Traxxas, because mm -hmm. they kind of are the benchmark. If you're going to try to release a truck to compete with that, mm -hmm. obviously this is trying to compete with Traxxas, being waterproof and all that. you got to hold up to it. And with our Traxxas Stampede 4x4, we drop in the pack. We went all day. No issues, yeah. loved it. We surpassed our expectations. It'll take on more than I thought it even could. And then you go to something like this, you plug it in, can't even run it for the first time. You know, you're yeah. gonna spend a half an hour just to get it ready to go. And then, you know, we have a list of things we gotta replace just to make it a decent basher. Yeah, and I will say, tough. like, I won't hold it against HPI that the ESC burned out. Like, that happens, and like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna be a lot more patient than your average, like, 13, 14 year old who got this for Christmas and now has to wait six weeks. By the way, HPI does. Uh, they actually service their own ESCs, which is really nice. It's not like you have to wait forever to get it from Castle, and it's a mm -hmm. no questions asked kind of thing with your hobby shop. Yeah, they weren't. They can really get good. a new one sent in, get it back really quick. So that's that's a really good thing the HPI is doing too. Yeah. I probably won't change the power system on this if we decide to keep it. I thought it was plenty fast. I can't yes. even imagine running on a 3S. It'd be like retarded. Yeah. He's doing standing uh, wheelies, backflips almost on a 2S. Yeah. Right. Um, so unless we did like some major mods with the uh, suspension and tires, you know, it's almost like a, it's almost like a short course truck. Yeah. Like I think that sort of terrain, dirt, you can run it through dirt and mud, but it's got to be 
flat. It's yeah. not. It just, it's just not there. Like we said, if you're selling it as a basher and how we compare it, you want to be able to take out and go, this thing, we're going to, and you'll see it in our upcoming videos too, we're going to have to throw different tire rim combos on this thing, tweak the, a lot of the electronics, a lot of the, the drive line, tuning up the diffs, just to make it what it should have been in the first place out yeah. of the box. And I will say, I think, I think I want, even as we're talking here, I want to give it that shot. Like, we're going to clean it off. We're going to replace probably the shocks because they were, I mean, this thing is like a brick hitting the ground. Mm -hmm. um, we, we'll leave the stack power system there, fine with that. Replace the steering servo, figure out what's going on with the diff, get some different tires. I think these tires, honestly, like the tread, it's pretty pathetic. Yeah. It's, that's why we agree. didn't have any traction. There's no tread on this. Like, this is not, uh, I'd like to see a more aggressive tire on that. So we'll throw some better tires Better uh, shocks. Mm -hmm. Probably throw a wheelie bar on there because. Fill the diffs. Yep, fill the diffs. We'll a long list of things yeah, to here's take the thing. care of. When we tear it down to clean it, we're going to do all the upgrades that at that moment. Yeah, we so, don't want to take it apart more than once. Yeah, I'm already thinking we have basically all the parts except for the shocks. I think these are standard, right? Like these are. Yeah, they're we standard can put some, uh, shocks. Some, some big bores uh, on, on there. on here or something. Yeah, I mean, it's caked with mud. Anyway, this review's already gone on so long. I don't want to leave you so negative. I will say we had a lot of fun with it. Um, I, don't, I don't hold the ESC against them, although, admittedly, when we were out there, I was like, ah, here we go, HPI. And that's a known issue, by the way, the ESC. It's yeah. not just us. Uh, but I give them whatever. You know, they, they make the truck. They should really just stick to making the trucks. Um, I'm not pumped about cleaning this. <laughs> Taking it apart. But everything, like you said, everything gener in general held up. Um, and that's, just, that's to its credit. Yeah. I didn't, I just thought the ride height hurt it. It didn't, it, it still rolled quite a bit. Uh, you'd think with this low ride height, low stance, that it would really grip well. Even mm -hmm. on a slippery surface, I was torsion rolling like crazy. Yeah. And that was frustrating too. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna make we're gonna upgrade this to how we think it should have came, which is basically better steering servo. We'll look at the suspension, better tires or more aggressive tires, wheelie bar, and I don't know anything else I'm missing. Not as of right now. But um, we'll keep you guys informed because we have a a list. Yeah. So would you buy it again? I'll let you. Would I buy it again? You know. I like the driveline for what they've done, and I'd buy it again if they released, I guess, a second version of it, a V2, if you will, and fixed all these little nitty-gritty problems they're having. It would be a lot more of a truck. Um, as it sits now, no, I would not buy it again. I definitely would not buy it again, and let me tell you why. I, I really, I struggle because I really uh, like it. Mm -hmm. I really want to like it because it's so fast and it looks so cool. Even though the shell, I think they should have went with a different color because it's like the exact same colors as, uh, as the Stampede. Um, I just kind of like it. It feels like something. But no matter what, I'm still going to have to deal with this layout. And the fact that if something like we're out in the field like today and the diff is tweaking out. Your day's done. Yeah, it's over. Yeah. I mean, you've got to spend four, at least an hour being fair, 45 minutes to an hour tearing this thing down fixing it and then imagine this like you spend an hour tearing it down you put it all back in you think you got it fixed and then it's still not fixed yeah. now you got another hour tearing it back apart like it's not being lazy it's it's valuing your free time like we can barely get together once a month that's why our running videos are so sparse i think this review is kind of reflecting the complexity of this truck yeah how long it's running because it, there's a lot to say about it. it's very tricky and that we wish we wish we all had more positives and less negatives yeah and i guess we'll we'll, we'll get it out we'll get out of here right now with uh you know i'm sure this will be a hotly contested topic but this is just our opinion we own the truck so before you post below calling calling us haters show me a picture of your savage flux excess because I bet you don't have one because <laughs> yeah, right. if you did you'd be agreeing with a lot of things we're saying but we're going to get another fair shot we're going to fix it up we're going to give it the upgrades we're going to take it out again and if you have any questions post them up on down below or shoot on over to our website at rcnightmare.com thanks see you guys